stifle arthrodesis using a 12-hole 3.5 DCP. The landmarks for the incision are the distal femoral diaphysis, the patella, the tibial tuberosity, and the proximal tibial diaphysis. The angle for the stifle arthrodesis is predetermined by observing the normal standing angle of the stifle in the individual patient. The angle commonly is 140 degrees. The foam is incised on the craniolateral aspect of the stifle. The foam is retracted to expose the distal one-third of the femur and the proximal one-third of the tibia. The tibial crest is osteotomized to aid exposure of the joint and to prepare a surface for the plate. The menisci may be excised. To determine the ostectomy angle, three K-wires are placed. The first K-wire is positioned perpendicular to the tibial diaphysis. The second K-wire is placed perpendicular to the femoral diaphysis. The third wire is inserted into the femur, distal to the second wire. The angle between the second and third wires is equal to the complementary angle of the selected joint angle. Two ostectomies are performed. First, the articular portion of the tibia is resected, parallel to the first K-wire. Next, the articular surface of the femur is resected, parallel to the third K-wire. Medial or lateral angulation of the ostectomy is avoided. The femoral and tibial ostectomy surfaces are opposed and fixed temporarily with K-wires. The guiding K-wires are removed. The trochlear ridges are resected to improve plate contact. An appropriately contoured 12-hole 3.5 DCP is applied. The plate is secured by first placing screws through the most proximal and the most distal plate holes. The remaining plate holes are filled and the K-wires removed. If possible, one or two screws are placed as lag screws across the joint to increase interfragmentary compression. The tibial crest is attached to the medial surface of the tibia with a lag screw. The axial alignment of the limb and the angle of the arthrodesis are critically observed.